Hi everyone, so I have here a solar panel that got pretty busted up in shipment. And I was wondering, can we salvage this? So in sunlight, I, I put my multimeter to it and we do get uh, 20 something volts open circuit. So I wanted to see how much current we can get from this thing. So. I also have here the standard issue dirt cheap solar charger. Um, it's a PWM solar charger. But let's see if we get any current on this thing. So let me zero that out and put it around one of these wires. And yeah, I'm, I'm getting about one and a half amps. The sun's been fluctuating, coming in and out behind clouds. 1.8 amps. And of course, using a PWM controller, I'm not getting the full potential out of this thing, but that was up at about two amps a moment ago when the sun was a little brighter. So I think this panel is still basically functional if we can seal off all the cracks in the glass well enough that it doesn't deteriorate too quickly due to weather. And of course solar panels are not highly expensive so we don't want to spend more than it's worth trying to repair it. But I think it would be interesting to see what we could do with this uh, just for some little solar power project, such as I might use this cheap little standard issue PWM controller to charge. Um, I do have, oh, we're up to three and a half amps now. Four amps, yeah, so we're, we're working well. I do have larger solar arrays here that I'm using to power a larger um, EcoFlow system that I keep in the basement. And I, I wouldn't really want to interconnect a damaged panel like this, especially it being a different brand from these other ones. I wouldn't really want to interconnect it with those others um, in a large system where there's more voltage. But especially for a little battery-powered thing, I've, I've put together a sort of poor man's jackery here uh, where I've just got a car battery that someone was giving away for free and the the dirt cheap four dollar charge controller um, and an inverter so as a cheap little portable system I think it might be handy if I had a solar powered uh, way of charging it and of course you usually like to have something a little more portable than this something that folds in half for easy transport but this was busted up in shipment so it's free so I, I think it goes nicely with my car battery that someone was giving away so my plan is to sort of coat the surface of this with a urethane uh, an outdoor urethane as someone else on YouTube uh, seemed to suggest and we'll see what happens. And of course, the issue with these little PWM charge controllers, um, while they're very cheap, so they can be very cost effective, if you've got a car battery that uh, is, you know, 12 and a half volts or so when it's charged, 12.7 uh, right now, according to this, um, and you've got a solar panel that puts out, I think, more than 20 volts. 20 volts, 20.2 volts at maximum power. So this solar panel would operate best at, ma at 20 volts, but I need to charge a battery at about, you know, not quite 13 volts, is that the, the solar panel basically acts as a, a current source. So I get however many amps out of this thing I can get. I'm, I'm drawing about 1.4 amps at the moment, and presumably I'd get that same amperage even if I were operating at higher voltage. So if I happen to have a battery that was just below that max power, maybe if it was about a 19 volt battery, then the two would work very efficiently together, even with a cheap PWM controller. 
but because there is a bit of a mismatch, I am pulling this this panel that would operate most efficiently at about 20 volts down to my charging voltage right now, which is about 13 volts. And I get the same current either way, roughly speaking. So I've lost you know, 13, or I've lost 7 twentieths of the power that I could have gotten if I were operating at a, a better voltage. And the the EcoFlow units that I've got these wired into, they have MPPT, uh, maximum power point tracking technology, that can make the conversion between the two. So the panels can operate at their most efficient voltage, while the battery can still be charged at its respective voltage. Um, but that's not really worth the cost um, for a cheap little portable system that I'm just cobbling together from a, a car battery that, as I said, someone was giving away for free, and a charge controller that is about $4 on AliExpress. So I, I think this seems salvageable, and we'll see what happens. So here it is. I've put two coats of Helmsman indoor outdoor spar urethane. So we'll see what happens. I think it's dry at this point, and the cracks certainly look a lot less obvious. Uh, but only time will tell how long they'll actually last against the elements. And I will have to do a test to see if this has done anything to inhibit the power production. Okay, so in the present sun, I'm getting about 1.7 amps. The sun is actually off, so let's hold that at about a 45 degree angle. All right, 2.76 amps, two and three quarters amps or so. And one thing I want to check is this one is actually a bifacial panel. So if I flip this over, only the front panel was damaged and I put the, the coating on it. So, and normally the front would be more efficient at absorbing the sun, but just out of curiosity, let's see what the other side does because that side did not have to be repaired. And I don't know how well you can read that, but that's about two and a half amps this way using the back face that did not have to be repaired. I don't really want to mount it this way because the frame has openings that can gather debris and I'm in a very woodsy area. Um, but it does occur to me that this side is probably going to survive the elements better. But I think it'll be a more interesting experiment to mount it with the intended side toward the sun um, to see how well this polyurethane coating holds up. And then once the solar panel stops producing voltage, that charge controller knows that it's now dark and can turn on the, a load for some number of hours. It defaults to three hours. So that's perfect for running some lights if you like to run some lights once it gets dark. In the past I've used you know standard solar light kits from Amazon and I always end up using fewer lights than it comes with because the solar panel and the battery are always a little small for my taste so this was actually a four light a four spotlight kit and I'm only using two spotlights because I want to get more power for a given amount of sunlight coming in. And so they, they make a smaller kit that just has half that size solar panel and half the size battery inside of it that's meant for two lights, but I, I like to have an oversized uh, solar power system for the lights. And so I always end up buying one of these kits and not using all the lights. So being able to use that little cheap $4 charge controller to build our own system is, is potentially appealing. So anyway, this seems like it's kind of working and I tried to improvise sort of a, a low cost mounting solution. There are a lot of, of mounting brackets available for solar panels. Of course, 
you end up buying that and then you need separately a way of anchoring it into the ground so i'm kind of cheating here um and i'm not sure if this wire that i'm using is gonna hold up well outdoors i don't actually know what it's made of because it just came from a scrap pile um, but that's holding it tilted at an angle there so we'll see how this holds up to the the great outdoors and in particular how the coating helps to protect from moisture damage to the the internal components of the solar cells um and so this is this is October 2024 as I'm recording this. So if you happen to be watching this in October 2025 or later, I will hopefully have updated the description down below with any any findings as to whether this this held up and kept working. Um, and if I didn't, feel free to leave me a comment to remind me. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So anyway, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up.